What do you think of when you hear the word Armageddon? My guest today has a lot to say on that topic. Stay tuned for this episode of Better Life Today. Hello and welcome to this episode of Better Life Today. Almost everybody has heard the word Armageddon. If a big natural disaster strikes, reporters will often use it. Books have been written about Armageddon. Hollywood movies have been made on the topic. There are many different views about what Armageddon is really all about. But my special guest today has taken on the topic in the book, Approaching Armageddon. Pastor Steve Wolberg, welcome to Better Life. Yes, thank you, Doug. I appreciate that. Uh you having me as your guest today. Pastor, we have a lot of questions about Armageddon we want to go over with you. We have a short amount of time, so we probably should launch right into it. So let me ask you the first question about this fascinating topic. What's your take on it? Well, uh, I've been studying Armageddon for many years, and as you mentioned, uh, Hollywood has its its version of Armageddon, which is all across the board. There's been a lot of movies that have been made about it that are uh, entirely you know, just way off the deep end. Mm. Uh, there's a lot of uh, Christian Bible prophecy teachers that teach about it, and yet not all the views are the same. Uh, probably the most popular view is that Armageddon is a, is a bloody Middle East battle against the Jews. I've heard something along those and, lines. And what yeah. we'll do in a little while is we'll actually open up our Bibles and we'll see what the Bible says about, about that word Armageddon, what the context is, who the contestants are and who wins. Yeah. So you're convinced that the Bible will give us an answer. Oh, we yes. can figure this out. Definitely we can. Okay. Well, let's, let me go over, what are the popular views of Armageddon? The, the, the main popular view is that, it's, uh, that the nations are gonna be gathered together into a valley north of Jerusalem mm -hmm. called the Valley of Megiddo. At least that's what it was called in the Old Testament. Uh, and that maybe the Chinese will come, the Russians or different forces, possibly Iraq or Iran. Uh, these are current views and that they'll all gather together and it'll be a, a military battle primarily against the Israelis. So, so there's, are there any sub views or is that primarily the view in well, the mainstream? Well, I, I think that's the most popular view. Mm -hmm. uh, there are some other ideas. Uh, I, I have a different take based on what I actually read in the Bible. Uh, the word Armageddon is only used one time in the Bible in Revelation chapter 16, verse 16. Okay. And in a little while we can actually open the Bible and look at that. But uh, I think that a lot of the popular views are really just not biblical when it comes to Revelation 16, 16. Right. So we'll look at that. Okay, very good. Now I'm looking at your book here. The cover looks pretty interesting. Can you kind of give me an overview of what, uh, what you decided to do here? Yeah, well, we wanted to, to portray uh, sort of a, a somber view. We have a tilted sign there and a city in the background that's uh, dark. And you know, a lot of things have been going on recently in, the, in this world that are dark. Mm -hmm. And so the cover is designed to show people that we are heading toward, toward a dark day. And yet over on the corner, on the upper right-hand corner, we have the clouds parting and the sun is shining through, and so the subtitle is Discover Hope Beyond Earth's Final Battle. And mm -hmm. what I do in my book, uh, based on scripture, is we look at the big picture and we look at, at what Armageddon's all about and what the good news of Armageddon is and how uh, on the other side of this, uh, we have the, the opportunity, the hope of being with God in his everlasting kingdom of love and goodness and uh, mercy and, and grace and all the things that God is all about. And so it's not all doom and gloom. There's a, there's a dark side, but then there's a bright side that good will win when it's all over. Mm. Can I take a side trip for just a moment? Sure. This is not the only book you've written. Do you have an idea of how many books you've written? Uh, I, I, I stopped counting uh, a <laughs> while ago, but I'm guessing it's somewhere around 40 books. And mm. every time I write a new book, I've got actually another book coming on the horizon. It's at the printer right now. Uh, I, don't, I don't, you know, keep careful track of, oh, this is number 41 or this is 42, but mm -hmm. it's a lot of books and uh, I've been a Christian for 41 years and God has just led me into writing. I've been studying my Bible for a long time and uh, 
This is just something that the Holy Spirit has led me into is to study and to write. Well, our audience may be a little curious about what your next book will be. In fact, by the time this is aired, uh, we air programs, you know, uh, over the course of time. It may already be out by now. Would you mind telling us the name? Uh, sure. It's uh, the book is called The Bloody Woman and the Seven Headed Beast. Well, that sounds and it's pretty got dramatic. a very striking cover. Uh, it's, it's a study of Revelation chapter 17, where there's this evil woman, she's carrying a golden cup. It's, the Bible says she's drunk with the blood of the saints mm. and she's sitting on a, on a beast that has seven heads and 10 horns. And so uh, my next book really tackles that topic and goes through every verse in Revelation chapter 17, trying to make sense of it and then to explain uh, what, the, what it's all about. Mm. Well, let's get back to the topic of Armageddon. Are we getting close? Uh, I, I believe we are getting very close. Uh, I, I, at our ministry, it's called White Horse Media, and we don't set dates. So Jesus said nobody knows the day or the hour, so we don't say it's going to be two years or five years or ten years. Mm -hmm. uh, although Jesus did say in Matthew chapter 24, verse uh, 33, he said, So likewise you, when you shall see all these things, mm -hmm. all these signs happening at the same time, a cluster of signs, he said, know that it is near at the doors. Mm. So uh, we believe, and I have a, just a strong conviction that, that we're not far away. Uh, essentially what, what the book does is it's divided into three parts. We have the first section, the first third really, that builds confidence in the Bible based on prophecies that have been fulfilled in the past. Mm -hmm. And then the, the, uh, the middle section is dealing with the cluster of science. What's happening around us uh, in the political world, in the environmental world, in the moral world, and how this uh, is actually fulfilling many, many scriptures. And then the last section deals with the Battle of Armageddon itself, what this is all about, the final battle between good and evil, and how uh, God will win, and how we have a hope uh, beyond the storm of a, of a future with Jesus in a, in a world that is indescribable. <laughs> no death, no sin, no suffering, no death, no pain, no sorrow, all that's going to be gone. And then it, it appeals to people's hearts to make a decision to follow Jesus so we can, we can be there together. That's what it's all about. Mm. I don't want to get ahead of myself. You may be answering this later on, but if not, okay. when people hear words like this and they think of the book of Revelation, it, they get scared. Scary stuff. The descriptions, the imagery uh, can, lead, can really spook a person. What would you tell a person like that? Yeah, uh, I, I've heard that many times. Uh, I was just reading this just a little while ago while I was having lunch. Mm -hmm. The very first sentence if, of the book of Revelation, mm -hmm. chapter 1, verse 1, says this is the revelation of Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. And so the book reveals Jesus. It's about Jesus. It's about his enemies. And, and Jesus is a, a loving savior in verse five. It says to him who loved us and washed us from our sins in his own blood. And if you look at the life of Jesus, many times Jesus said, let not your heart be troubled, don't be afraid. And so it's true that we are in a, a sober battle between good and evil. And there's a lot of you know, real things that are happening that do cause people to be very, very concerned. But if we really dig deep enough, we'll find that that God doesn't want us to be afraid. He wants us to be on his side. He wants us to trust him. And he promises he'll bring us through whatever comes. Mm -hmm. And that on the other side of the trials of this life, uh, we, have, we have hope of a beautiful eternity with him. So yeah. we don't need to be afraid, but we do need to be sober-minded and look at what's happening you know, straight down. So be aware. That's right. Be aware, yeah. Well, what does the Bible actually say about Armageddon then? Yeah, okay, that's, uh, that's the big question. What does it yeah. really say? And as I mentioned a little bit ago, the word Armageddon is only used one time mm -hmm. in the entire Bible. You would and, think it was more by the way it's talked about. Yeah, I know. Well, it's such, a, it's such a, uh, an intriguing word and mm -hmm. it's, it's an apocalyptic word. So people think about Armageddon, you know, they think about some big event at the end of time. Mm -hmm. But as I mentioned, Hollywood's made a lot of movies about it and generally they're just way off track when it comes to the, what the Bible actually says. Mm. Uh, Revelation 16 verse 16 says, he gathered them together into a place called in the Hebrew tongue Armageddon. Mm. So there, there's that word. And it's interesting, Doug, that if you were to look on a map 
uh, a world map, even a Middle East map, there is, there is no literal location on planet Earth that bears this name Armageddon. Uh, the word is actually a combination of Ar, meaning mountain, mm -hmm. and then Megiddon, going back to the Old Testament Valley of Megiddo, where there were a lot of battles, a lot of slaughters that took place north of Jerusalem. But the word itself is a, is a unique word. Uh, and, and the way to understand this word is by looking at the context. The verses right before verse 16, the verses right after verse 16, and in verse uh, 14, this is uh, the, the buildup. Verse 14, Revelation 16, 14 says, for they are the spirits of devils working miracles which go forth to the kings of the earth and of the whole world to gather them to the battle of that great day of God Almighty. So what's happening is he here is there are uh, evil spirits, Satan and his angels are going out to the kings of the earth and to the whole world. So first point is that this is a global gathering. And then it says they're gathered to the battle of the great day of God Almighty. Uh, Armageddon is the battle that takes place on the great day of God, the big day. And the next verse, verse 15, Jesus says, behold, I am coming as a thief. So Armageddon is connected to his coming. And when he comes, he will uh, do battle and he will basically put down and destroy all the global forces of Satan and evil that are gathered together. Uh, it's, a, it's a sad fact that at the, at the end of time, the majority of people are going to be on the side of, of Satan, mm. uh, but not everybody because he, you keep reading and Jesus says, blessed is he who watches and keeps his garments, which has to do with his robe of righteousness that he puts on us when we believe in him, lest he walk naked and they see his shame. So Jesus speaks to his people uh, who are not on the devil's side and he says, watch and be ready. Hold on to the garments of my righteousness. I'm going to come as a thief and I'm going to, I'm going to win the battle against all the world forces of evil. And then when you keep reading after that, and then it describes what happens when Armageddon hits. And it talks about uh, the seventh angel pours out his vial. There's a great voice from the temple of heaven that says it is, it is done. There's voices, thunders, lightnings. There's a great earthquake such as was not since men were upon the earth so mighty an earthquake and so great. And then it talks about Babylon, a mystical Babylon is destroyed. The cities of the nations fall. Every island flees away and the mountains are not found. So it's definitely not a local Middle East war. It's worldwide. It's the world forces of evil gathering together. And we can you know, pick up more of this on the other, other side of the break <laughs> that uh, you know, Jesus comes and puts down Satan and his global forces. Well, it does sound pretty dramatic. Friends, we're going to talk more about Armageddon. We want you to stay with us. We're just going to take a short break, but we'll be right back. Stay tuned. <laughs> Better Life Broadcasting is a viewer-supported Christian media ministry that offers streaming programming via apps on various devices. Please visit blbn.org to support Better Life or to get more information. And don't forget to like and subscribe. Hello and welcome back to Better Life Today. We've taken on a big topic, it's called Armageddon. And with me today is Pastor Steve Wolberg. Pastor, welcome again. And you were telling us in the previous segment that um, Armageddon, you said it wasn't an actual physical place like people might think, is that what you were saying? Yes, because if you, like, again, if you look on a map, there is no location on earth that's, uh, that's called Armageddon. The word is a combination of Ar, meaning mountain, and Megiddo going back to the Old Testament Valley of Megiddo, which is north of Jerusalem, where there were a lot of battles mm -hmm. that were fought. And what happens is Revelation picks up that, that Old Testament history and then it applies it to a global battle. Uh, I, I'm completely convinced based on my study of the context mm -hmm. that the view that Armageddon is simply a bloody military battle against Jews 
uh, Middle East center just north of Jerusalem, that that doesn't really fit the text. Mm -hmm. As you look at the text, as I mentioned, Armageddon is used only one time. When you look at the context, verse 14, we have the spirits of devils working miracles going forth to the kings of the earth and the whole world. So it says the whole world, not just Middle East. Yeah. And they're gathered to the battle of the great day of God Almighty. Verse 15, Jesus says he's coming like a thief. So it has to do with his coming. Mm -hmm. And then he tells his people to be ready. And then Armageddon hits in verse 16 and then verses 17 to 20 describes uh, a huge earthquake such as has never been the cities of the nations falling. Uh, every island fleeing away and the mountains not being found. So it's, it's global. Yes. It involves the devil and his worldwide forces gathering uh, the kings of the earth and humanity to fight against God. And when you look at chapter 19, it actually describes Jesus coming and what he will do when he comes. And uh, it's very clear that instead of it being Russians or, or Chinese or ir Iraq or Iran against Israelis, it's, it's much bigger than that. Mm. It's God against the world forces of evil and people are, are either on the side of Satan or they're on the side of Jesus Christ and it's worldwide and the effects of the battle when it hits it says every island flees away and the mountains are not found. So if you just, if you stick to the word of God, there's no biblical evidence from the only chapter that uses the word Armageddon, that this is a local Middle East bloody military battle against Jews. It's just not there. So if people look at it in that sense, they're looking too small. They're thinking too small. Exactly. It's much bigger. Now, Pastor, is it our imagination or does it really seem like Satan is taking on more of a worldwide control. Definitely, yeah. No, it's not uh, our imagination. You, have you seen that? No, it's not our imagination. I mean, people look around the world right now and they look at all the things that are happening. Like the, you know, I mean, there's just Matthew 24, Mark 13, Luke 21, talk about a whole host of signs, which a lot of my book, Approaching Armageddon, deals with these signs like, you know, violence and sexual immorality and a global environmental crisis and love getting cold. Uh, lawlessness increasing, uh, increase of natural disasters like fires and earthquakes and floods and hurricanes and all these things. Many of these things have happened in the past and have been going on through history, but there's a cluster of them all coming together. Uh, Daniel 12, 4 talks about the time of the end when knowledge increases, we're in that time. Luke 21 talks about uh, men's hearts failing them for fear as they look at things coming upon the earth. Mm -hmm. And there's never been a time like today where people can through technology and through Facebook and YouTube and, and satellite and television and the internet, they can actually look at the things that are coming upon the earth. Yeah, uh, there's immediately. Just, that's right, I mean, there's a whole cluster of things that, that have not happened uh, in the past like they're happening now. So I'm convinced that we're getting closer to Armageddon. And uh, in a second, we can look at Revelation 19 and see what that says. Well, please, uh, as you wish. Sure, okay, Revelation 19 verses 11 to 16 describe Jesus coming. Okay. Uh, he's described as coming on a white horse. Uh, it says, and that's where we picked the name White Horse Media because we like this picture of Jesus coming as, the, as heaven's hero to conquer the forces of evil. Mm. It says, uh, uh, his name is faithful and true. In righteousness, he's judging and making war upon the forces of evil. Uh, his eyes are like a flame of fire. He's got many crowns on. His name is called the word of God. Verse 14 talks about the armies in heaven which follow him. Uh, and then verse 15 says that he will smite the nations uh, like it says in Revelation 16, after Armageddon that the cities of the nations fall. And then it says his name is King of Kings and Lord of Lords. Mm -hmm. Now here's a very interesting verse, Doug. In verse 19, Revelation 19, 19, it says, I saw the beast and the kings of the earth and their armies gathered together to make war against him that sat on the horse and against his army. So we read in chapter 16, the evil spirits gather them and the kings of the earth for the battle. And this verse says that they're gathered together to make war, not against Jews, but against him that sat on the horse and against his army. Mm -hmm. So that's where the battle engages. Jesus returns, the world forces of evil are gathered to make war on him. And then Jesus 
wins. He basically crushes Satan and all the forces of evil, mm -hmm. and he ends the reign of darkness. And that's what Armageddon is all about, the battle of the great day of God Almighty at the very end when Satan and all his forces are gathered together and Jesus returns and puts them down. And uh, Can I ask a side question? Sure. Do you, do you really think Satan thinks that he has a chance of winning? He's put a lot of effort into this, a lot of time into this. We know as Christians, Jesus wins. Why does he even try? Yeah, well, I, you know, he's deceived. He's mm -hmm. self-deceived. He convinced himself that he could, he could beat God mm -hmm. at the very beginning. Uh, he thought he could win against Jesus Christ, and he put him on the cross, but then that was part of the plan for Jesus to die for our sins, and then he rose from the dead. So does Satan think he can win? Maybe he does, because he's, he's insane. Mm. He's a self-deceived fallen angel whose mind is so warped that he thinks he can win. But when you read it in the book of Revelation, the revelation of Jesus Christ, that chapter, chapter 19, it's very clear that when Jesus comes uh, to make war on Satan, that Satan will lose. And actually verse 20 says, the beast was taken uh, and with him the false prophet that wrought these false miracles. And then it says, these both were cast alive into the lake of fire burning with brimstone. So it's clear that Satan and his forces go down. Mm -hmm. uh, and there's just, you know, there's no question in my mind and we have an opportunity to be on the winning side. But we have to choose Jesus in order to, to be on that side. I thought before that he must be frustrated a lot because whatever he tries against Christ fails. He fails and fails and fails at the things that he really wants. But I have noticed that he is successful in one area, and that is when he's able to bring a soul down, he hurts Christ. And that is the one way that he must gain some satisfaction. Yeah, he, he's an insane, evil, uh, malicious, wicked being. Mm. And, and Doug, the good news of the Battle of Armageddon mm -hmm. is that in spite of all the evil and the darkness and the pain and the suffering and the unfairness that we see around us in this world of sin, mm -hmm. the good news is that God is going to come and he's going to destroy the forces of the devil and sin and he's going to win in this battle and that love will win, a truth will win, righteousness will win mm -hmm. and, that, and, and we have the opportunity to choose to be on his side and to live forever with him. But it's a battle. And the, the battle of the great day of God Almighty is the culmination of the battles that are happening in our hearts, in, in all of our lives. We're all in a war between uh, sin uh, and, and righteousness and between God and Satan. And we need to choose him and God will bring us through. You know, when Adam and Eve partook of the fruit they were not supposed to eat, they had no idea what they were putting us into. They had no idea the years and centuries of suffering that they would open up. But praise the Lord, the Lord said, I'll rescue you. That's right, yes. and, and they had no idea that their one sin would result in Gethsemane and the cross. Mm. But that's what it did. And the Gethsemane and the cross is the revelation of God's love for us and that he, he can forgive us and he can bring us through to the other side if we surrender to him. Mm. Well, Pastor, I want to give you a few more minutes at the very end. Sure. We're getting near the end of the program, but I don't want to miss on telling our audience about how to get your book and your other materials. Friends, if you would like more information from Pastor Steve, you can write to Whitehorse Media, P.O. Box 130, Priest River, Idaho, 83856. That's Whitehorse Media, P.O. Box 130, Priest River, Idaho, 83856. Or you can call them at one 800 782-4253, that's 1-800-782-4253. And of course, their website is whitehorsemedia.com. That's whitehorsemedia.com. And I'm sure, Pastor Steve, that you'd be happy to talk to them or to uh, show them the materials availability. And of course, go into great depth about the topic of Armageddon just by reading this book. Sure, and if they yeah. want me to sign their copy, just mention that and yeah. I'll be happy to do that too. Are you available for speaking engagements too? Uh, I am selectively. I don't go out you know, every week because I've got a family and a 16-year-old and a 12-year-old daughter. So, But I go out once a month and I am available. Okay, very good. Well, we've only got maybe a couple minutes left. 
Do you have a final thought for us? Sure, I do. Uh, Revelation 21, verse 4 says, God shall wipe away all tears from their eyes. Amen. And there shall be no more death, neither sorrow nor crying, neither shall there be any more pain, for the former things are passed away. And he that sat upon the throne said, Behold, I make all things new. And he said to me, Write, for these words are true and faithful. These words in the book of Revelation are the truth. Sin is coming to an end. Jesus will win. His kingdom is coming. And we can be part of that if we choose Jesus. Mm. Well, Pastor, can I ask you a quick question? Sure. A little personal. When you get to heaven, besides seeing Jesus, that is the focus of heaven, but besides seeing Jesus, what do you look forward to? Seeing my dad. Mm. Is there a particular reason why that means something special? I was just thinking about it today because my dad and I are very close. He died a couple years ago and oh. he was a Christian and I really want to see my, my dad. Our loved ones. That's right. Friends, we want all of our loved ones there. Christ will win. Satan will lose. And this is the opportunity we have to get our loved ones into the kingdom. And so whether it's learning about Armageddon, whether it's learning about the gospel, Better Life preaches a lot of that over the air all the time. But people need to put away things that are not going to get them into heaven, that are distractions. It might be television. It might be the computer. Something's getting in your way or your family's way to keep them from knowing how to get ready for the kingdom. But if they miss it, they've missed out on something there's no words for. And we want everybody there. Well, friends, Pastor, do you have one more thing to tell us? The last verses of the Bible say uh, that Jesus is coming. Mm -hmm. And then it says, the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ be with you. Mm -hmm. And that's what the book of Revelation is all about. Jesus coming in his grace and helping us to be with him forever. That's right. Friends, God's government is a government of love and of peace, and you don't want to miss it. Well, we want to thank you for joining us on Better Life today. Remember to visit our website too, blbn.org. You can get live streaming, program schedules, and much more. Remember, stay in the Word, and Jesus will guide you all the way home.